A card test of Matas Kurat says the number three has always had something mystical about it. There's the Triceratops dinosaur, the Christian trinity, the saying all good things come in three, and the legendary triumvirate at Cologne's carnival. Car makers are also fond of the number three, and Mazda is no exception. This is a third generation Mazda 3. Last year, Matas took a look at the hatchback version, but this is the notchback. Let's have a look. Heute teste ich die Stufenheckversion. Mazda's new 3 is looking to redefine the compact class. This third generation version with Sky Active technology features a lightweight and rigid chassis. That makes a difference in the car's handling. The notchback sedan is aimed at the international market, but it could also do very well here in Germany. The new chassis shape could be a plus too. Mopta says the notchback is 12 centimeters longer than the hatchback. That's apparent both in the trunk and the more spacious interior. It feels like you're sitting in a larger car. But the wheelbase is exactly the same, 2 meters 70, and so are the other chassis dimensions. So this car handles much like the hatchback. It's solid in the curves, and the steering is nice and responsive. Both cars shift smoothly too. Mattis has no complaints here. Mazda's Skyactiv technology is intended to enhance fuel economy. But unlike most manufacturers, Mazda does without a turbocharger. Our Skyactiv G120 model consumes just over 5 liters super over 100 kilometers. It takes 8.8 .8 seconds to make the sprint to 100. But we're testing a gasoline version. The diesel accelerates faster, but it also sports 110 kilowatts, 22 more than we have here. Matas does notice the difference compared to the diesel he tested last year. Accelerating out of the curve here isn't quite as snappy as it was in the Skyactiv D150 version last year. Let's take a look back to last year. When Montes took the Mazda 3 hatchback for a test run, he liked the engine, but he wasn't as taken with the dashboard layout in the Sportline variant. But this sedan here is equipped with a center-mounted layout. Matis definitely prefers the combination instrument with a large central speedometer over last year's version, which featured a large tachometer and a very small speedometer in the bottom right corner. This here is a lot more user-friendly. The central tachometer is standard in the centerline layout. Overall, the interior of the Mazda 3 is very clean and elegant. The all-aluminum rotary switch and the red stitching detail also add an extra touch of elegance. The materials are pleasing to the touch and the seats are comfortable. But what does Matas think about the mix of materials? That's one of the drawbacks, Mata says. The car has some carbon black elements, here in front too. Then there's the high gloss elements, plus the matte aluminum. It's too much. They should have left something out, maybe the carbon black, and used more high gloss for a more uniform effect. The center console is also a bit wobbly. That also doesn't make such a good impression. When it comes to the exterior, Mazda definitely wanted to put its best foot forward. This model features the Kodo design language, Mazda's new watchword. It employs long and flowing lines to create a sense of speed and motion. There's a bit more trunk room here than there was in the hatchback. It's roomier, but it has a rather plain styling. So what speaks for a Mazda 3? Mata says he'll give us three good reasons. First, you get a decent amount of car for the money, even though the sedan runs 500 euros more than the hatchback in Germany. Second, there's the elegant exterior. And third, there's the agile handling, which makes for a fun driving experience. But in the end, it's a very personal decision. 
The Mazda 3 is a fresh take on the compact category, especially in the notchback version. If you're not attracted to downsizing turbo engines and straight up and down generic design, you may well go for the Mazda 3. And here in Germany, the base model sells for just under 21,000 euros.